The next lab value we're going to talk about is lactic acid, also referred to as lactate. Now, I've mentioned it previously in the metabolic acidosis lesson, but I want to provide a little bit more detail and clarity as to what this lab value really means. So first, let's just look at normal values. In a perfectly healthy patient, we expect their lactic acid level to be less than one. Now, there's really no such thing as a low lactic acid level. In a critically ill patient, however, we have a little bit more leeway because we kind of expect their value to go up a little bit. So as long as they're less than two, then we're happy and we consider that normal in a critically ill patient. So to give you a little bit of foundation for where lactic acid comes from, I want to go all the way back to chemistry. The main source of lactic acid production in our body is anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobic means that the cells are functioning without oxygen. So this could be because of perfusion, it could be because of hypoxia, but either way, the cells are trying to do their job and use their energy without sufficient oxygen. So what happens in the absence of oxygen is that glucose gets broken down into pyruvate or pyruvic acid, and that either gets broken down into alcohol and carbon dioxide or into lactic acid. So these are the two things you're going to get as a result of anaerobic metabolism. So anytime that we force ourselves to function without enough oxygen, we're going to end up with a buildup of lactic acid. So let's look at what some of those conditions could be. We're actually going to see that strenuous exercise, especially for a prolonged period of time, can cause a slight buildup of lactic acid. Some personal trainers will even tell you that you're not working hard enough if your muscles don't burn because of lactic acid. The good news is this is typically temporary and under normal circumstances, it's not going to cause any kind of harmful effects. Now, we could also see anaerobic metabolism happening simply because of a lack of oxygen in the blood for whatever reason. Now, the other thing that could cause a buildup of lactic acid is any state of poor perfusion to the tissues. The best examples of this are severe hypotension and shock states. We may have plenty of oxygen, but we're not getting it there to the tissues, and therefore the tissues are having to function without it. Now, we'll also see an increase in lactic acid levels in sepsis or severe infection. And this has been shown to be related to the catecholamine release that happens when your body's trying to fight off this infection. So these two categories here, the poor perfusion and sepsis and infection, are the most common causes of lactic acidosis. So evaluating and trending these levels is now part of most sepsis bundles and it's part of the uh, surviving sepsis campaign guidelines. So we always look at those in shock and sepsis. And since the kidneys play a role in excreting lactic acid from our systems, then it's possible that levels could be elevated in renal failure. So what are we going to see in our patients? Well, the first thing to understand is that elevated lactic acid levels especially above two and especially above, you know, three or four is considered a metabolic acidosis. So if you remember from the metabolic acidosis lesson, the most common sign of severe acidosis is vomiting. The body is trying desperately to get rid of acid any way that it knows how. One of those ways is also to breathe faster. So we'll see tachypnea as well. And then again, the possible hyperkalemia, so you'll see muscle weakness and possibly arrhythmias, and then the signs of the acidosis itself, like the altered level of consciousness, the dizziness, the headache, et cetera. Again, it messes with the brain because it's super, super sensitive. So when it comes to lactic acidosis, our top priority is still to treat the cause. So this might mean giving IV antibiotics for a sepsis situation, giving vasopressors in a shock state, or making sure that we have airway and breathing and oxygen support so that the body can stop using this anaerobic metabolism. Now, other interventions that we commonly use for lactic acidosis are IV fluid resuscitation, dialysis, and giving sodium bicarbonate. Fluid resuscitation tends to improve perfusion to the tissues. It helps decrease the need for that anaerobic metabolism, but it's also going to kind of help to dilute some of that acid within the blood. 
Dialysis will help to remove that excess lactic acid, especially if renal failure was part of the problem. Now, administration of sodium bicarb can be a little bit controversial in lactic acidosis specifically. In certain patients, this can actually cause uh, an increase in acidosis. So make sure that you're having a conversation with your provider about what's best for your specific patient. Either way, sodium bicarb is not used alone. It's always used in uh, conjunction with the other therapies. Now, since I did mention the surviving sepsis campaign, I want you to know what the guidelines are when it comes to lactic acidosis and sepsis. So any lactic acid level greater than two millimoles per liter in the presence of an infection is considered to be indicative of a septic situation. And then we'll usually recheck that lactic acid level in two hours so that we can see what the trend is. Okay. So make sure that you know your facility's specific guidelines on how often to recheck, how to intervene, et cetera. Priority nursing concepts for a patient with elevated lactic acid levels are going to be acid base balance, of course, as well as uh, perfusion and infection control, because we know that poor perfusion and sepsis are the two most common causes of lactic acidosis. So let's recap. Lactic acidosis is the most common form of metabolic acidosis, especially in hospitalized or critically ill patients. Therefore, the symptoms that you're going to see are related to the presence of metabolic acidosis. Things that can cause elevated lactic acid levels are anaerobic states like strenuous exercise, hypoxemia or ischemia, poor perfusion like in hypotension and shock, and sepsis and infection because of that catecholamine process. Again, any level greater than two in the presence of infection is considered indicative of sepsis. Now, we always want to treat the cause, support their airway and breathing as needed. We'll give IV fluid resuscitation, IV antibiotics, vasopressors to support that appropriate perfusion and decrease that need for anaerobic metabolism. All right, so those are the basics of the lactic acid level and what it means. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today, and as always, happy nursing.